Hello, Dave here with emergencyprepguy.com. I appreciate you stopping by. Uh, it's a Saturday, it's overcast, it's cooler. You can see I even have a warmer shirt on today. It's really the first day where it's starting to feel like fall's getting ready to start. And uh, what I had planned on doing today is fixing the problem. I don't know if you can see, I've got the top off and the front screwed off and set aside to the automatic watering system. So what I planned on doing today was solving the problem that I had last winter with this automatic watering system. If you watched any of those videos, you'll know that the, the barrel in the birdbath de-icer keeps the water about five degrees or so above freezing all winter long, no matter how cold it gets, because the box is really well insulated. And then there's a little down there where you, if you can see the, the cords un underneath, there's a yellow switch there that whenever the outside air temperature gets below 40 degrees, it, that kicks on and there's a, it powers a pump that circulates the water through the entire system continually. So if it's ever below 40 degrees, the water's all, always moving throughout the system. And like I said, the water stays about five degrees above, uh, above freezing in the barrel and so with that I never had even when it got the coldest I think it got this winter was minus nine degrees with that none of the pipes ever froze um, the only problem I had was with the red horizontal uh, bird watering nipples um, just the nipple itself where the bird pecks to get the water here's a metal nipple to use as an example this little thing that they would peck on to get the water, enough ice would freeze in there that they couldn't move that and they couldn't get the water out. So what I had to do whenever, and it only happened when it was uh, in the single digits or below. And whenever it was that cold, I would just have to get a small flathead screwdriver and go out and just kind of dig the ice um, out of those plastic, red plastic nipples and free up that uh, little thing and then the water would flow again. I'd have to do that a couple times a day when it was that cold. Um, so I don't want to have to do that even though that was a lot easier than having to, uh, you know, carry water out and, ha and water everybody by hand, you know, all winter long. So I wasn't, you know, complaining. But it'd be really nice if nothing froze up because like the rabbit nipples all winter long, they never froze up at all. And so I never had to worry about watering them at all. Just, you know, keeping the system full. So as I was thinking about it, you know, why did the rabbit nipples not ever freeze up? And why did the bird pla uh, plastic nipples, the red ones, why did they freeze up? There were several comments that I got from um, different viewers of the videos that, and then I had some of my own thoughts. And uh, some of the, kind of what the thoughts were was, well, one thing is the, the rabbit nipples are metal and they're screwed into the T's just like the, the plastic bird nipples. Um, but maybe that metal um, conducts enough heat that it, it from the running water uh, that it keeps, you know, conducts enough heat that it keeps the nipple from freezing, freezing up. That is a very strong possibility. That made a lot of sense to me. Um, the other thought was, well, and this was by somebody, a viewer that, um, that watched one of the videos, and I thought this was a really good idea too. They said, well, when it gets really windy, you pull the plastic down over the rabbits, and that keeps the wind off of the nipples. Maybe, uh, maybe if you moved the, the bird nipples in the quail hutches into the sandbox area where they would be completely out of the wind, maybe that would solve the problem. And um, I think that would, would definitely help. Um, but not only are these out of the wind, these are also metal. So I don't 100% I don't know if that would solve the problem. Um, just moving the plastic nipples you know, into, the, into the thing. Uh, the other thought that I had was Carolina Coops. Um, I noticed when they first came out with their automatic watering system, um, they had they used that's uh, they used the same plastic horizontal bird watering nipples that I do, um, 
and at first they used the the t's um on their pipes and screwed the the nipples into the t's and then i noticed a year or so after they came out with those systems they got rid of the t's and they just had a straight pipe and they drilled uh, holes in directly into the pipe and and tapped threads into the into the pipe and screwed the the plastic nipples directly into the pipe and that's also seems like that would really be a benefit because uh, again this is a different nipple it's a metal one but uh, the uh, the back part of the nipple would be sitting right uh, in the warm water um, where it wasn't in those tees and so the circulating water um, being warmer I you know I could see how that would keep the the nipples from freezing that's probably I haven't talked to to Carolina Coops about that but I'm pretty sure that's probably why they made that change so I think if I made that change that Carolina Coops made plus switching to the uh, metal nipples I think a hundred percent chance uh, I would have no uh, no problem with the nipples themselves freezing up because you'd have the conductivity of the metal and you'd have the the back of the nipple which is really where it can't freeze up you'd have that sitting right in the running water and so i think that's a hundred way if i was if i was designing this whole system again that might have be the way that i would i would do it um, i'm not going to do both of those um, unless what i am going to do doesn't work <laughs> and then i have to uh, um, and the reason is is the i the way I designed uh, my watering system for the both the, in the quail hutches and in the chicken coop is I have the the pipe with the, the the nipples screw into the plastic PVC pipe sitting on the outside you know with wire in between the chickens and the pipe so the the pipe is on the outside of the wire but there's holes in the wire that the nipples stick through. And I like that because then I can insulate the pipe because um, I've got such a long distance for the water to be running where if I didn't do that, granted it would only be a short section of pipe that wasn't insulated, but the pipe wouldn't be insulated. And so um, I can't put the insulated pipe inside the run or inside the hutch because the birds would eat all the insulation off and that wouldn't be good for them and it wouldn't be insulated. So. So anyway, <laughs> so what I'm gonna try doing is I'm going to leave the T's, I'm gonna leave my pipes on the other side of the wire insulated. So I need the T's to, to add length to the nipples. Um, and then I'm going to, but I am gonna switch to, to metal nipples. And then we're gonna try it. And hopefully I don't regret this, this winter, that I didn't uh, switch the, the pipe as well. Uh, but anyway, that's what I'm gonna that's what I'm gonna do and that's what I'm gonna give a, give it a try So I'm gonna take you with me as I make these uh, repairs and I'll show you what I do Okay, the first thing that I need to do which is why I have the front off of this uh, Automatic watering system is I need to close the spigot here um, Because when I'm gonna be taking off the watering nipples, I don't want to lose all the water that's in the barrel so this will keep uh, you know, I'll lose a little bit of the water that's in the lines, but uh, I won't lose any of the water that's in the barrels. So that's the first thing I had to do. Come on, girl. Scoot. Okay, so the first thing, obviously, I've got to do, and I'm going to try to do it from right here, is screw these nipples out. You can see all the water coming out of there. So might as well let that drain a little bit and if you look here you can see I I don't think you had to but I put a little bit of the the, the plumber's tape on there just to kind of prevent it from leaking so now what I got to do is set that aside and thread some of that tape onto these metal nipples and get this plastic bag back open this is some plumber's tape that came with the, I hope it's decent plumber's tape. This came with the uh, pump that I got for the system. Okay, if you can see, I've got some uh, 
of that tape wrapped around there and my plumber's tape's a lot wider so it was a little tricky getting a thin strip wrapped around there but let's see how it fits in the threads it's the right size that's good okay let's try this other one Okay, I ended the spigot up at the bottom of the barrel, so there should be water in here again. So I just want to test and look if they just bump that, they get all the water they can want. So let's hope that doesn't freeze this winter. Okay, hopefully you can see this all right. I've got the, this is the back, I meant the back of the, one of the quail hutches, and I've replaced the two, uh, watering nipples with the metal version and as you can see I push on it and it works like a charm she's figured it out she's drinking out of the she's drinking out of the new spigot Okay, well I hope that was interesting. Thanks again for watching all the way to the end of the video. Don't forget to share this on your social media. That really helps us spread the word and grow the channel. And liking the video really helps us get the word out. It helps with the Google algorithm. And if you like this kind of content, we'd love to have you subscribe. Thanks again, talk to you in the next video.